My adventures with Six Arc continue. In this video, we're going to take a look at the CMMG Endeavor 300 chambered in Six Arc. Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. This is actually my third Six Arc video. The first was the announcement and some details around the cartridge, partnerships, etc. The second was experimental load development. You're going to want to check out that video and that article if you're curious about load data, performance characteristics, capabilities for Six Arc. And now we've got the CMMG Endeavor 300 chambered in Six Arc. Now I'll note that CMMG, I would consider them kind of your one-stop shopping source for Six Arc. They've got multiple rifles. They've got Resolute rifles that are 16.1 inch barrel, 100, 200, and 300 series. These 100, 200, 300 series are kind of like trim levels. As you upgrade from 100 to 200, you get better furniture, better trigger, etc. 200 to 300, same kind of thing. This is the Endeavor 300, so Resolute 16.1 inch, Endeavor 20 inch barrel. This is really, I think, a great size, uh, great form factor of rifle. The 20 inch barrel, as you'll see when I talk about performance numbers, gets you close to you know, maximum performance in terms of velocity, but with a lot less length and bulk. So if you're gonna run a suppressor like I do for an AR-15, I think this is a great all-rounder. Endeavor, also available in 100, 200, and 300 level trim for six arc. In addition, they've also got upper groups and they've got magazines. They've got combo packs where you get an upper and some magazines if you already have an AR-15 that you want to six arc -ify with one package. So that's what CMMG has to offer. Next, let's take a tour of the rifle. Before we get into features, feeds, and speeds on the rifle itself, let me talk about some of the accessories that I've added and parts that I've swapped out. So starting here at the top, we've got a Nikon FX1000 6 to 24 by 50 first focal plane scope with a Nikon black cantilever AR mount, and I've got a Lone Star bubble level. This is a great standard package, great magnification range for this medium to long range work that we're gonna do with 6ARC. I've also swapped out the Geisley SSA trigger for a TriggerTech AR Diamond, which I use for all of my serious accuracy testing for ARs. And then I've added a KRG full-length ARCA rail, which very easily attached via M-Lock. This has the 15-inch M-Lock handguard. And I also fabricated an adapter, a T-slot adapter, so that I could use this Mystic Precision F-Class style bipod with the ARCA system. Basically, I'm standardizing on ARCA, so I'm trying to get all of my bipods and all of my other bag riders, accessories, things like that, to be converted over to ARCA. It's very easy to adjust, very easy to add and remove accessories, and it's a nice stable surface if you're gonna just slap it down on a bag. This Mystic Precision Bipod, there'll be some info if you click on this first link in the video description in the article about that. I've used it on multiple rifles. So that's basically all that I've done to the rifle. So I thought what we'd do next is I'll take the upper and the lower separately and walk through all of the features, specs, and details. So the rifle comes with a single 10 round magazine. This is gonna be equivalent to the 6.5 Grendel mags. In fact, they're identical. These have fed really well for me and for CMMG you can identify this 6.5 Grendel or 6 Art compatible magazine with the blue follower. Okay, so we're clear here. We're gonna go ahead and pop our pins so that we can take a look at the upper as an assembly. So this is an M4 style 7075 T6 aluminum standard upper. We've got the 15 inch free float handguard. This has M-lock on the sides and the bottom. and It's got the full length Picatinny rail on the top. Of course, free floated hand guards are gonna to help to enhance accuracy. I've got a sling attach point here that uses the M-lock slots. And I've also attached, as I mentioned, this full length, it's a 15 inch Arca rail from KRG. 
I've got a 5 8 24 thread protector here. The rifle comes with an SV muzzle brake, and I've been kind of rotating, swapping between this muzzle brake and the, this is a Silencer Co. Hybrid 46 Cal. I would probably use my 30 Cal can, the Omega 300, but I don't yet have a cover for it, and I'm shooting in the heat here with a whole lot of mirage and boil, so the suppressor cover becomes an even more imperative accessory at that point. Interestingly enough, I didn't see really any difference in accuracy for the various types of ammo that I shot between using the Silencer Co. Hybrid, uh, a bare muzzle, or the SV brake. Using the Magneto Speed, I don't have the mount that's compatible with suppressors, so I did a lot of shooting with either the SV brake or just the bare muzzle, and it was uh, fairly well equivalent. And we've got the oversized charging handle. This is a CMMG unit that I've got on several of the CMMG ARs that I have. We have the traditional forward assist, and it's functioned really, really well. I haven't had any problems with feeding. I will note that the newer uppers that come with the rifle or are available separately have an adjustable gas block. This is a very early unit, so it did not have the adjustable gas block, but I haven't had any problems with feeding either suppressed or non-suppressed. So I haven't even installed it yet. Just know that if you order one now that you'll be getting one with an adjustable gas block, which is definitely a plus. Okay, up the lower, we've got the standard AR-15 type lower. We've got the MOE grip, the MOE trigger guard. We've got the Magpul PRS Gen 3 buttstock. I really, really like this buttstock either for an AR or any other type of rifle, such as the Ruger Precision Rifle that accepts standard AR-15, AR-10 buttstocks. This Gen 3 is nice because it has the, the sloped bottom, which I like if you're shooting with a bipod and a rear bag, it gives you some elevation control and also the way that the butt pad slides up. My Gen 1 that I have, I think it was one of my early AR builds that I used that one for, you couldn't, you couldn't slide the butt pad up. And if I'm shooting prone and I'm down on the ground, I find it much more ergonomic to have that butt pad raised a little bit. So that's a basic walkthrough. We've also got the ambidextrous fire control lever, which I really like. That uh, has very positive feel to it. It works very well. And this entire package, as you can see, it breaks down very easily and is a really great package for field shooting. I also used a Harris SBRM with a swivel stud adapter, and I've also used a Warren Skyline bipod, and each have their pros and cons. I did find that this Mystic Precision bipod, the M-Pod, didn't work as well off of concrete under all conditions because there's just a little bit of bounce. The rubber feet helps with that. Now, if you put a piece of carpet on the top of your bench, that's gonna help quite a bit but I like the wide stance of this F-Class style bipod because being an AR-15, there is a, a little bit of amount of play between the upper and the lower, and this wide stance helps to stabilize the upper so that you have maybe a little bit less torquing that goes on each time the gun fires. So that's a basic tour of the rifle and the specifications accessories. Let me next dig into the triggers in a little bit more detail. So this rifle comes with the Geisley SSA trigger, which I've run on multiple CMMG rifles. In fact, I'm running that in my 6.5 Creedmoor AR-10, the 300 series Endeavor from CMMG right now. I've posted trigger scan results for this in the past, and what I really like about the SSA trigger is the fact that it's got a very clean break. And when I'm shooting the rifle, I know when that hammer is gonna drop. If you look at the trigger scan, it's got a first stage weight of about two and a half pounds, a second stage of total of about 4.25 pounds, which means the difference is about 1.75 pounds. That's what you feel when you actuate 
the second stage. The AR Diamond is a lighter trigger. It's also two stage. The first stage is only four ounce, so it just feels like a slight take up. And then the second stage can be adjusted between 20 ounces and 3.75 ounces. I have mine adjusted down towards the minimum. Again, if you look at the trigger scan results, it breaks at a total weight of about one and a half pounds. So the effective felt trigger pull, because it's a two stage, is gonna be less than that. And again, I've got the AR Diamond in this rifle because it's consistently what I use from rifle to rifle when I'm testing for accuracy. So again, if you click on that first link in the video description, I'm gonna have the trigger scan results for, from both triggers side by side so you can see the difference. So let's talk performance. Now this has been a really interesting project because when I got this rifle, I did not have factory ammunition and I did not have load data. See that last story that I published with experimental load data and load development for 6ARC for more details on that. I was able to find a load, actually multiple loads, that performed really well. And that was before I got factory ammunition. I'll talk about those results in just a moment. The very first group that I shot with the rifle at 100 yards, which was with a 27 grain load of Varget behind a Hornady 108 ELDM bullet, was 0.611 inches center to center. And right then I knew, wow, this is definitely really promising. With more extended testing, I was able to get the group size down further. This is about a 0 0.550 inch group. So I know that that is repeatable, and that was actually the same load, 27 grains of Varget behind the 108 ELDM. Just a quick note, please do not use this load data for your own loading purposes. It's for reference and illustration purposes only. Pressures were a little bit high, and I can't guarantee your safety if you use that load data. Full disclaimer is in the video description. The issue with the Varget was that I didn't quite have the velocity. So that led me to take a look at H4895. And here we have a three quarter inch group, almost exactly, that I shot at 100 yards, which had a bit of a boost in velocity. Let me show you the shooting of that group. So for that 27 grain load of Varget, we had an average velocity for five shots of 2602 feet per second and an SD down at 7.6 feet per second. So I actually really like the Varget load. We were able to get a little bit more velocity out of the H4895 load, which was 26.6 grains, again behind a Hornady 108 ELDM bullet. That was 2630. In further testing, I was using TAC powder from Ramshot, and I saw velocities for a 95 grain bullet up into the mid 2800s, but I didn't really have time to test accuracy with that. I have to go through and do a full load workup, which I haven't done yet, to really consider that as a, a viable load. And that is a good segue to the moment when the factory ammo showed up. So here I've got Hornady's 100 and eight grain match. This is the same bullet, same case, pretty much the same thing that I was working with with my loads. And then I also had some Hornady Black, 105 grain boat tail hollow point uh, factory ammunition as well. And what I saw for the factory ammunition was the 108 ELDM was up at 2660 for velocity and the SD was 13.2. So keep, remember, we had 2630, so we've got 30 more feet per second. We've got a higher SD number, but when I examined the brass, I had no signs at all of pressure. No imprint from the ejector cutout, no swipe around the 
primer pocket or anything like that. I saw very mild pressure signs, nothing concerning with the hand loads that were kind of pushing the velocity. So I'm guessing that Hornady probably has a better powder that is optimized for velocity. And I've got a load workup which was better for accuracy and better for SD numbers. So again, trade-offs. The Hornady factory ammunition was shooting larger groups, uh, averaging about an inch or a little bit over. And I was down at three quarters to a half inch for the ultra precise testing that I had done. So again, I guess, I think this gets down to sometimes you just have to do your own loads to find the perfect combination of components, powder charge weight, bullet seating depth, and so on and so forth that's gonna be completely optimized for your rifle. One thing that I noticed when I was looking at the Hornady factory brass I was loading versus once fired brass was the shoulder actually blew forward about 10 and a half thousandths of an inch, which was a lot more than I expected. I'd sized it and bumped the shoulder back about three and a half thousandths of an inch, and that chambered just fine in the rifle. So my thinking is the rifle's chamber is probably correct, and I think Hornady was really conservative with their sizing, as in the shoulder's back further probably than it needs to be. I haven't talked to Hornady yet about that, but I'm gonna have that discussion to find out in this new domain of six millimeter arc loading, cartridge specifics, chamber specifics, really where things should land and what those dimensions should be. So performance overall, uh, great. I did some limited shooting at 600 yards and had some fun tagging some steel. Because of fire danger hazards here with dry grass, I was not able to go out beyond 600 or do really extensive testing of any kind. But if we look at the ballistic potential of this cartridge, it's certainly viable out to 1,000 yards. So the last thing I wanted to cover was functioning and reliability. During my load development, I had a couple issues with cartridges not feeding properly. In one case, I had not bumped back the shoulder far enough. I was a couple thousandths over, and I had intermittent failures for going into battery. Um, and then in another case, I had a couple jams with the magazine. I believe it was related to the load because in my testing of the fam factory ammunition, I had zero failures and for all of the loads that were reliable, I had zero problems. So what does that mean? There's been a lot of talk about magazines for 6.5 Grendel and will they or will they not work well with 6 Arc? My experience with multiple of these blue follower CMMG magazines, 10 rounders and 15 rounders, is I haven't had any problems at all. And that's great news. And then with the adjustable gas block and with the suppressor, bare muzzle and brake, Again, I didn't have to put the adjustable gas block parts that I had from CMG into the rifle because I didn't have any problems. So, what can I tell you about this rifle? This is a great rifle for 6 Arc. I think 6 Arc has a lot of potential. I still have more testing and evaluation to do, probably some more load workups and ballistic analysis to really fully understand how this is gonna compare to 6.5 Grendel what the true knockdown power is at various ranges for hunting and how things are gonna group and land at a thousand yards, for instance. My question for you is, do you have experience with six arc? Have you already gotten a rifle? Have you gotten an upper or a barrel? Please drop a comment and start a discussion. I'd love to hear how things are going for you. Do you have a CMMG rifle? Do you want a CMMG rifle? Drop a comment and we will start a discussion. If you have questions for me about the CMMG product lineup or this specific rifle, I'd love to answer those as well. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Click on that first link in the video description and I'll have links to product pages and more information in the in-depth article that I always publish on ultimatereloader.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe with notifications for more content related to 6 Arc and ARs and long range shooting. Also, I've got Ultimate Reloader shirts at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'm on Patreon, links in the video description. Thanks for watching, until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.